Hey everyone, it's Joan and Zayas from the Automator, and I watched a video earlier from Microsoft Copilot, and you know, we all know, we've, Zayas and I have been talking about it, AI is coming to our apps and programs in every way that you can think of, it's really crazy, but what I love, like 30 minutes into this video, they talked a little bit about how they're doing the powerful stuff they're doing, and I thought it was a really good thing to talk through to help explain of why it's so amazing and why Microsoft has an amazing edge, right, because right. them and Google too, don't get me wrong, but People who have a lot of other data about you, if you use that, it's same like with direct marketing. You, we should love marketing, right? When it's done properly and we target people based on their usage or their needs or their attitudes and behaviors, it gives us relevant information much better. And it's you're like, wow, that's a great ad or that's a good thing because it, it's yeah. something I'm interested in. And that's kind of what they're doing here. So let's start walking through. So with each of the tools Microsoft is incorporating, um, open right, AI, so, chat GPT yeah, into it. Those guys. Yeah. So those guys there. And from there, they send it over to their co-pilot to start. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be sent which, all the data, whatever, whatever you input, right? So right. whatever you were, that's the user uh, input or whatever. Right, right, right. Now co-pilot actually says before, this is the really cool part before sending it to the large language model or chat right, GPT, which is, right? yeah, which would be very generic because, and we all do this, right? We've talked about using prompts, um, instructions to help get a better response from chat GPT. Like if we you just ask it, that. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. If you tailor saying, Hey, think of this, I want it done at a college level. I want it to have, you know, all these things taken into account or version two of auto hockey or whatever, right? You're setting the stage to make sure the response is better. And that's exactly. what they're doing is instead of going there, they go over to the Microsoft graph and, and go exactly. and look at your data and dig around and say, hey, really? You know what? He asked for this, but this is the context, right? Here is yeah. how we're going to tailor this and adjust it better. So they pull through that data and then bring that back into Copilot, which then gets shoved over to the large language model um, or the that's AI. Right. And then it does its magic, right? Which is right. It does its its thing and whatever. But here's the interesting part. So, and to your point, this section here, which is your data, um, we did something similar. So, we were sending prompts to ChatGPT, but every time we sent the prompt at the beginning, we were trying to set up some context, like, "Hey, right. um, we're going to be talking about our hotkey V2, and I want you to answer based on that context, right?" And we actually even set a lot of rules, like if you're going to return variables, return them in a specific way, right. um, set the variable names like this. Basically, this section here of the Microsoft Graph is doing exactly the same, but with stuff that you care about or things that actually are relevant to you. Because just imagine that I ask it, hey, give me uh, uh, some car models, and it's going to send me a bunch of cars that I cannot afford, not even right. close to it, right? right. Like, right. yeah. <laughs> so the, if, if it knows more or less your range, it might give you a list of cars that you're really interested in on, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then once it does its processing, it actually comes back into the co-pilot from the larger right. model. And this is where, from my understanding, they do some verification and making sure that there's no private information, that there's no, hey, how do I create a bomb that's going to kill civilization, you know, this kind of stuff, right? right? They filter it basically, make sure everything's okay. And then they shove it back into your app. So right, exactly. this is, it's a really cool, smart process. And this is where part of me hates the fact that Microsoft and Google have all this data about me, but at the same time, because they're improving my results and using their tools, I'm okay with it. I don't love it, but it, it means now I'm going to have much better results. Yeah, so so just imagine that we're talking about meetings here, right? So it has information about your meetings. So Microsoft knows because you're using Outlook, for example. And now you're going to write up an, an email. And then you t part of what your input is, is you start typing the email. This is sent. All the context for the meetings is sent. The language model is going to auto-complete the email for you. But when it gives you time frames, like, okay, tomorrow at 5, it's going to check for your meetings first. And it's just going to answer or create the email containing time frames that actually make sense. It's not going to give yeah. you, which it has happened to you. You, you 
recently you were typing yeah. an email and it was telling you like good morning and it was like the middle of the afternoon and we were right. like, yeah, like come on no yeah. like <laughs> right. what time is it or whatever yeah. so basically this is what they're aiming for but the interesting part is that if i understand this is going to be integrated into the apps you don't have to do anything right. you're just going to start using it and it is already going to be there which to the point that we were making before um it's going to happen more and more and probably many companies are not going to even announce it they're just going to go ahead and integrate uh some kind of language model into their search engines or their you know tools and you're not going to even notice microsoft is just well, announcing it right what'll be kind of really creepy in the long run is imagine Isaiah's like i'm doing now i go on vacation right and i'm like uh -huh. Isaiah's handle my emails for me uh -huh. if i could give you access to my account it would actually mimic how I speak and how I write yeah. my emails. And so you could really closely imitate me, you know, based like, on- I don't even have to. I just have right. to write, let's, let's write an email about this one thing. Right. It just writes it in the form of- In my of tone. Lines. Yeah, right. exactly. exactly. <laughs> right. Right. Which is very serious. No, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah. No. But yeah. yeah. So really cool things coming down the pike. Um, very exciting stuff. And this is just one of those things like it is- it's painful for me to let other people have my information, but at the same time, if they're using it well, it's really, really beneficial. Yeah. So the one thing, um, this brings up the fact that most of your data now is centralized somewhere. That usually has the issue that some hackers are going to now try to focus on getting that. But um, those big, huge corporations, they try and do whatever they can to save something, or at least they, or at least they pretend they do. Right. But um, in the end, how do I say this? Like how easy your life is going to be because of the service makes it really hard to give them up because I still use Google, even though I know they have half my life already recorded somewhere. And But I still use it because it is so easy for me to connect my phone and my computer and pass information between them. And they know the context of everything that I really it's just, yeah, no, that's easy. You well, know, I like, was I was out here, I'm out in Vegas, and I visited Kevin, who's a HK Hero member. And um, we were t I was telling him, he's like a cross between a CPA and a lawyer um, doing stuff. And I was telling him, you know, are you using chat GPT for writing your emails? It's like, how would I use it? I'm like, oh, oh my God. Like for him, his emails, you know, are very specific and long. And I'm like, it's going to change your world, right? It's going to do yeah. so good a job at writing very clear stuff. And then of course, and actually in this video, I highly recommend you watch it. Not, I mean, it's, it's not mind blowing in the demonstrations of what they say, but what I loved about it was they, they addressed the issue of like, Hey, it doesn't always get it right. And they mentioned it mm -hmm. in the video several times. It's close. You know, you might have to fix a couple things here and there. And they show some examples where they're, they get the first draft going and then they edit it, which is exactly how you and I have talked that's, about using that's it. That's right? the point, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's creating a draft. Right. So that, because the hardest job is to right. actually starting. Right. Right. After the ball is rolling, that's right. easy, easy peasy. Yeah. But, but the, the figuring out the first word uh, stuff. Just pass it to the language model. It returns something that you can start working with. Well, and it's interesting because I watched a video, which I shared at the Hero Group after this one, from a guy who said, what a crazy week in AI, right? And I think it was like the third thing listed. So I don't, I don't remember the name of the company, but they were up in the stage sharing their usage of AI, right? Well, what they did, because they were really concerned, kind of like with what happened with Google, where things broke and didn't work or whatever, was they pre-recorded everything and didn't have it dynamically doing stuff because oh, they wanted to be safe. Okay. Well, yeah, that actually, I mean, their stock price went down, if I'm right, like 10% right after the call because they faked it and didn't trust it, right? And people weren't impressed. But with Microsoft, that's why I thought Microsoft did a great job because they're like, hey, it might F up. You know what? But yeah, that's, you know, they're they're like, that's how it yeah, works. We're not promising yeah, that's, you it perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. I, I think they did a really good job of reminding you yeah, we're not saying it's perfect, but it really gets you going. And and it's just, it's a crazy time we live in. So um, what do you guys think? Do you think the trade-off, you know, comment below if you think the trade-off of them having your data and having it automatically customize, you know, adapt to your, you know, 
making it more relevant to your searches automatically without having to do all the legwork to say, hey, I really want you to think about this and this and this and this, yeah. right? Like it's doing it for you instead of you having That's to right. add that to your prompt and give the context. I think it's crazy, right? Especially because I can just get that much more work done. So That's right. right below, That's if you right. learned something, please like the video. It really helps us out or subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Thanks, everyone. Hey, talk to you later.